Somebody call Butch Cassidy, because we got the Sundances, kid. Terrible, terrible joke. Apologies. It might happen again, though. I'm not going to say I won't do that again. So this is the uh, 231 MIL. Um, wait, no. Mother? Mother-in-law? No. ML. Middle living. <laughs> <laughs> this is the 231 Middle Living Sundance. And as you saw behind me, we have a huge line of Sundances here. I got to walk almost the entire catalog just now. This is the first one I wanted to put on camera. This was my pick. If I was going to go couples camping in a Sundance, that would be the one right there. Although they're what, a 21 or 22 model, also pretty close, pretty good model. But... You know, this is very much, uh, very heavily inspired, I think, by the 22 MLE Grand Design Reflection. It's similar in layout to a 22 MLS Keystone Cougar, but they're all doing it a little bit differently. So what is Sundance doing that kind of attracted me? Um, I like how they're using Asdell under the fiberglass in the sidewall. I do believe they're single layer Asdell. I think they're still interior wall panel being uh, Luan. Um, but they're carpetless, which is fantastic, and they did their seating arrangement a little bit differently and their entertainment arrangement a little bit differently. I also think this one provides the best um, feeling of separation between the bathroom and the kitchen because the bathroom and the kitchen are right next to one another. And there's a lot of people who are going to look at us and say, I don't know about you, son, but I don't crap where I eat. Well, I respect that. I don't do that either. But I think this one has the greatest level of partition and separation between the bathroom and the kitchen. And sometimes it's just those little differences that go into this. Now, we're looking at a Western Edition model uh, today. Um, there might be a couple little variances as compared to something made uh, out of the, uh, the the Indiana style. Like we're looking at a two-way fridge instead of a 12-volt fridge that the uh, Eastern Editions would have. I was a little surprised to see that it had absolutely no solar on it right there. I think that's a miss. But that's the kind of fair information I'm going to give you as we go through. And if you appreciate that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now, if you were a, uh, a returning viewer, a regular member of the RV Nerd Herd here, and um, uh, you're not familiar with Sundance, one of the easiest ways to kind of get you about 85% up to speed is that I mentioned that this is kind of a sister or a cousin to the Heartland North Trails that you've probably seen on our channel previously. They share a lot of DNA. They share a lot of very similar qualities, like they are ventless, carpetless flooring, Notice, too, they go with that marine woven slide flooring. I, I have to make sure I point this out because sometimes on camera, if you're not familiar with what it is, it looks like carpet, but it's not. Um, that's the same kind of stuff you might find on the deck um, of a pontoon, basically. They uh, only sparingly use floor heating vents and only when they really can't run a, uh, a cabinet side ducted heating line. So this is easy breezy, beautiful cover grill uh, kind of cleaning. You know, it's just as simple as it really comes. And this one, it, from the outside, it's not obvious, but when you sit inside, it has awesome window coverage over here. So you get to look at your campsite. But well, something else it really benefits from is a big opposing breeze window overlooking the slide. Now you may notice too, it does have those blackout roller shades. I pulled one of those down there and I'm not trying to smoke screen you on nothing like oh maybe that window doesn't open for airflow no it absolutely does that's something that they're actually really good about here um giving us a lot of windows that open for airflow that's something i appreciate i really personally like the light bright colors um i could see somebody looking at this it does have a bit of a raw unfinished kind of look but i think i don't know maybe that's this one's charm if that makes any sense um it's a six and a half foot sidewall but it's got a severely vaulted uh, ceiling with a walkable roof on that. And how can I prove to you that this RV has a roof? And don't tell me it's because it has a ceiling. <laughs> Air of, is, of course, uh, centralized here. And um, the, the one thing on this one, it's just small enough. It is an open bedroom design. I know that's going to be a turnoff for some people. Um, it, I don't know, it might be a turn on for some other people. <laughs> I don't know your life. Anyway, um, but there are privacy curtains. I, For whatever reason, I just lumped them both over onto the right-hand side. You can see the privacy curtain tied back over there on the left. One of the important things here, though, is this is outfitted with a 60 by 80 true queen bed. So it's not a shorty. If you like this layout, but you want a king bed, look at the Cougar 22 MLS. I'll leave you a link in the video description. Now, kind of peeking around at the storage here, also take note of uh, the location 
of all of the power outlets. Uh, you know, there's plenty of those. But there are also um, USB plugs under the overbed lights. So like when you're laying in bed, the light's straight above your head. Those do have USB plugs. You may have noticed full overhead storage. But as I uh, demonstrated there, they don't have any kind of struts to hold themselves open. The cabinets above the dinette that we're, well, not looking at right now, they are the same way. Where it's good storage, but you do have to manually hold it open by hand. But um, actually, we, we took in a camper on trade once that I walked through, and somebody took one of those um, plastic um baggage or holdbacks and they just popped it into the ceiling there now there's not a lot of structure into the ceiling to hold something like that but it's it doesn't take a lot of weight it's not like you need something severely load bearing in there to uh to, to kind of check all of that out um as i back up here giving you a look over again this is the door side of the rv that uh you know we are peeking at right now um, one of the other cool things here, uh, again, the, the blackout roller shades all over the place, but you also have storage doors below that dinette. And if you didn't see the door handles, it would be so easy to miss um, because it's like the doors are recessed, really. The one other thing I think could actually be cool on this, but I don't know that it's a big deal because they did give us those doors. The back side, like right here, if that was open, that could be a shoe garage, which I think would work really well. Then again... That big open pocket of space under the bed. Obviously, it could be a shoe garage, but what did you guys think of that? So it doesn't have, like, you don't lift the bed up to get to storage. It's just open air storage, but it's not really visible. What are your thoughts on that? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that's for me, personally. Uh, my OCD is triggering. I, you know, OCD actually is a very serious, real condition. I don't have it. We say that too much, but anyway... Those outlets aren't exactly square. That's something that could be straightened up a little bit, but I'm like, <clears throat> I'm, I'm looking at it. And obviously, if I see something, um, I'm going to say something. I try to present things fairly. Oh, by the way, um, flashing lights incoming in case you're sensitive to that. Look at the lighting package in this. Like, ooh, that's awful, right? And then, ah, I mean, everything comes to life in here. It goes from drab to fab, baby. <laughs> now, um, over here, this is, uh, you know, the view from the sofa right here, which is excellent. Uh, but it, it, if you kind of take note here a little bit, that is also a uh, the, the view of the uh, entertainment center. And I, it's interesting. I think some people might like that. I think some people might not. So, like, Cougar, um, Imagine, they will mount their TV up near the ceiling. So that you can always use the window. I think these guys, though, gave us a little bit bigger window. Not to mention just that extra counter space. That's really handy. Like, I could actually see somebody, I don't know, maybe putting a coffee maker or something over here. That is weird. That is weird that there's coax plugs right there. But the TV's right here. Okay, so I'm just guessing. Maybe somebody can, can, can fill me in on this. I'm guessing those coax ports, like if you wanted to mount a TV on that wall so that when you're over here lying in bed, you could watch TV. Because that is the one thing I'm kind of realizing on this floor plan. When you're laying in bed, that TV, that televator, it does not pivot. But, uh, I mean, you know, outlets. All, there's, there's outlets all over the place around this thing, which is really nice and really handy. Um, you can get a larger 15,000 BTU air conditioner upgrade on these. And something else that's a little different, um, they they went with a hide -a bed over here. Now, I would imagine there's a theater swaption. I'll try to verify that before I put this video out. Sometimes I forget. I'm sorry. If you're curious, if I didn't put a note on the screen, um, just uh, write me a little comment. Be like, hey, ding that, you... Uh, you know, you, you forgot to check into the sofa. And I'm not even going to be offended if you say it um, exactly like that. But one of the unsung qualities of this RV right here is the kitchen. And one of the things I want to specifically do is move you around nice and slowly so you can see the location of the power outlets. Now, when you're in the little stovetop nook, those outlets are very obvious. When you're back by the sink, um, the, the outlets are under those overhead cabinets. That is very common a very typical thing that you tend to find in a lot of laminated rvs so kind of keep that in mind you might have noticed that nice recessed sink i was actually really happy to see that that sink cover 
fits in place extremely nicely. Like, um, it, uh, it actually, you know, it's not like a, a matching thermal foil sink cover like this, but it doesn't really go anywhere. Not to mention, I love the window coverage back here. That's something I, I this big window over here, it might have cost them a little bit of overhead cabinet space, but I, I love all the light and the visibility. And again, when you crank the lights up in this thing, whoa, it, it really lightens and brightens up very nicely. The bathroom though, the bathroom was uh, a, a little bit tight to the tune of, I'm, I'm actually gonna flip you over to fisheye mode for a second. Because this is really one of the only ways that I can kind of get you in and around to look at the toilet space here. Now, um, the left-hand side, if you're a lefty, the way that that uh, countertop cuts away, you're going to be doing just fine over there. But obviously, if you're a righty, it's going to get a lot more tidy. <laughs> and I don't mean T-I-D-Y. That kind of reminds me, fella came in the other day, and he was wanting to know where we kept them United States bees. And I was like, what now? He says, yeah, you're always talking about them US bees in them campers. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. And that, <coughs> my friends, concludes our dad jokes for the day. Now, to really drive home the fact that this one is fully road mode accessible and actually, I think, 100% road mode functional, I thought I'd actually stand in the back. I'm standing in the bathroom. You see the bathroom door there. We can obviously get to the sink. There's no cabinetry that gets blocked off as a result of this. This is totally turtle friendly, dude. She passes the Cracker Barrel camping test with 100% satisfaction. Oh, oh my, look at that. There's uh, above the dinette. These lights also have some of them United States bees. And maybe it's a little thing. I know I, I try not to place too much stock in names, but they do really shape our experiences. They set up that expectation. The name's Snake River. Hmm. <laughs> it sounds like Indiana Jones and the Snake River. Like it doesn't sound pleasant to me. But ignoring that, ignoring the one little thing on this that says Snake River for whatever reason. Nice coach. Now you may have noticed if you had an eagle eye, the big folding entry door handle was not on here. I, I don't know what happened. I don't know why. I don't know if we broke it. I don't know if a customer broke it. I know that it's sitting right there. It got kind of pulled out of the wall. It's an easy thing for us to fix, but fact is when you look at this, you're not going to see it. What you did see in there though was a massive storage cavity. And I'm gonna give them some serious credit. I know we're really wedged right in here, but they did a fantastic job of maximizing the awning on that. That starts dead at the back wall, and it goes all the way up to that front baggage compartment. That They, they wasted no inches of that space right there. And as I mentioned before, um, Sundance is a, uh, a close cousin to the North Trails that you may have seen on this channel prior. They are managed by different people. They're built in a different place, but they share a lot of DNA naturally. Like that enclosed heated underbelly is one of those. Um, I do appreciate the fact that they don't oversell uh, a weather package. It seems like everybody and their brother goes, well, I have an enclosed belly. Uh, um, um, I'm Four Seasons. Well, no, you're not. It takes a little bit more than that. And I appreciate that they're not trying to to, to overpromise and underdeliver because man, you got a lot of money riding on this thing, you know. We let's make sure we get it right. You will know. So you see those banana rama yellow bars there. Those are the uh, uh, the stabilizer jack support bars. So um, those are power stabilizers. So power tongue jack, power awning, um, and all of our hookups all conveniently located in one nice little spot right there. I think that's a great thing they do. It's a walkable roof. I don't think they're set up for a ladder i can't find anything that indicates that this is set up for a ladder and i know that that's going to be a deal breaker factor it's tough sharing stuff like that but again there's a lot of money riding on this i want to make sure you know what you're getting a neat thing they do though 
This is a simple thing that you could do to any RV, but especially on a shorter, shallow slide like this, when you have a really smooth slide wall, they just take these extra pieces of trim and just glue them on the uh, side of the slide. It's not flashy, it's not fancy, but it is extremely effective at making sure those double wiper seals right there completely flip and get flush in and or out. Because if they don't, if they're crimped, then basically you just created the perfect path for water to get in that thing. So whether it's this one, that one or 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 this, uh, just, it just, it just go, it's like a Stanley Kubrick, uh, huge point perspective of Sundance trailers down here. This Junction City, Oregon location is, it's, it's massive. It's, it's massive. It's the biggest single RV facility I've ever seen. Like you need to come out just to meet the people and just to like s s take 15 minutes to go on a golf cart ride around this place. It's incredible. But back to the task at hand. If you're curious about the RV, check the link in the video description where you can see where we have one nearest to you and what we're asking. Uh, and short of that, remember, we can deliver RVs. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. It's the end of the day. I'm tired. I think um, I got some sunburn going on the old nugget here. I'm going to go get some aloe vera and calm that down and pick up some um, uh, sunscreen for tomorrow. So you fried my brains. I'm done. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.